Hello, my name is Colin Scott Thompson. Welcome to my workshop. In this video, I'd like to discuss the connector link, what connects your canopy suspension lines to your risers, some of the designs that have changed over the years and the misinterpretations that we seem to have, a bit of maintenance and some tricks on how to stop them giving you trouble and how to connect them correctly. So what are we looking at here, connector links, all the various ways of connecting your suspension lines to your risers. I can remember seeing the first set of Type 17 one inch risers in my younger days when Shubi Knotzin arrived in our drop zone. And he didn't use any connector link, he actually sewed his lines directly into the risers. Uh, it looked so cool little inconvenient when you wanted to do maintenance, but it was a cool factor, supreme. Through the ages, we've used L-bars and uh, different shapes and eventually come around to the rapid link, the connector link like this, and now moved on to soft links where we used to put some Dacron line around several times and then finger trap it back on itself. We thought that was a great idea. Eventually I got a bit tired of finger trapping inside a finger trap and changed to just using normal Dyneema line, wrapping it through the lines and through the risers several times and then tying it off with a surgeon's knot, finger trapping the tail ends and hitching it over. It seemed to work great. The very first removable reusable convenient soft link was parachute to France and it was quite a tight fit very clever innovative idea and the other clever thing they did was they placed half a press stud inside the riser so there was no need to stitch it into the top of the riser to keep it in control that ring would sit perfectly on the half press stud and keep everything nicely in place. As you hear, see here, it was very close, no rattling around at all with this design. It seemed to be a great thing. Later on, other manufacturers started doing uh, their own designs and the slink from Performance Designs came to the market. A little bit easier breathing space and uh, the main and reserve type or for a type seven or type eight riser, you'd probably want to use a slightly bigger one. You can get this on onto a type eight. Other manufacturers went a little longer still in this. This is one for tandems, which goes around three times. Nice idea. Things I didn't like so much about the soft link was they are susceptible to heat damage particularly on a tandem where you have five meters of line where the slider is rushing down and then it stops right there. It potentially would go melting through your soft link. Unlikely, of course, but in the early days when we were running Dacron line on our tandems and you couldn't really get a proper protector to cover where the slider was sitting, I would make type three uh, covers and you can see how this one has burnt up. That's just from the friction and the heat of the slider grommet. I imagine what that's going to do to your soft link. In fact, I have one pretty nice example here. You'll see it in the enlarged photographs. This came in for a reline. Ordinarily, I wouldn't change soft links if they didn't look too bad, but this this was shocking for me to find a soft link in that condition. Thank goodness the lines needed replacing because, of course, the owner had never noticed that the damage was quite so extreme. It was on a canopy without cascades, so a huge amount of aramide line helped to increase the friction. That before soft links became the norm. Metal links like this, the rapid link, were what everybody used. 
You'd certainly want to have the metal-metal contact with the slider grommet. You'd want to have that protected using a rubber tube or a plastic tube, PVC tube, was kind of standard. Uh, silicon tubes on the smaller links got popular or a type 3 fabric tape. At one point there was a plastic ring that was used um, to avoid the metal metal contact but it didn't actually help as much as the plastic tubes did. These did not last forever. You had to be careful, particularly when you had your your cover on the rear riser. You can imagine the slider grommet sitting here during flight and the control line would pass several hundred meters in its lifetime and eventually it would cut through and you notice what's happened with this cover. It's turned into quite a trap before it gets to this sort of stage, if you see it wearing out maybe halfway through the diameter of the wall thickness, excuse me, not the diameter, once you see it wearing through halfway or a little less preferably of the wall thickness of the tube, take it off and rotate it. This is far gone, but if you slipped it up, no need to unstitch it, rotate it around and put it back in place. And you're ready for action again. Once this side is worn out, you could take it off and put it on the front risers and take the ones that are on the front riser and put them on the back. So depending on the type of line you have, how much you fly the canopy, these will last longer than others. Notice how I've got it secured to the link. It means I can, with a little bit of effort, I can slip it up if I need to do some maintenance. Open that up with my tool, of course, and do whatever I have to do and then slip it back down again. That stitch is for several reasons. It stops this from inadvertently coming loose and sliding up the lines during the deployment, which could lead to some inconvenience for you. It's also there, it's stitched on in a particular way so that if somebody's pulling on the riser, for example, during flight, this thread will stop you pulling the protector down so far that the metal starts peeking out the top and defeats the whole object of the protector in the first place. So I definitely would never run any of these link covers without securing them using a technique like that. Nowadays, I, I tend to use these protectors. They, they're more friendly to use, a little bit less uh, labor intensive, and they do protect the metal. And Quite honestly, all the canopies that we see nowadays are running stainless steel grommets, not the brass grommets. It's not quite as an issue because the stainless steel handles things better, but we still want to have some protection there. So go and have a look at all of your equipment with the plastic tubes, check out the back. What happened quite some years ago when people were having accidents with this, it was blamed on the tube. So what did they do? They banned the tubes. You had to remove all the tubes from your equipment. I believe that was in the UK. So, all right, we don't do any maintenance. Why not just rotate it when it needs rotating and do some proper inspections? Running your lines and your links without any protection on there meant you would hammer through the grommet, the grommet would get seriously damaged and then that would damage the lines and we'd have lines failing. So with that logic, if you're going to ban the protector, which then results in the lines failing, what are you going to do next? Ban the lines because they were failing? Why not just do some proper maintenance? These are grommets which have not been damaged from a, 
a slider slamming into a link quite so much as from steering lines or main suspension lines as well rubbing past and eventually polishing 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 and, and going right through that's going to tear up your lines as well so if you're running these make sure you have a good inspection in there here are some marvelous examples of what happens to your suspension lines down at the connector link end if you allow them to be slammed by the grommet no protection at all so if you're not going to run this type of protector go ahead and run something but allowing the slider to impact the connector link it's slowly going to chew through your lines or in some cases not so slowly this one looks great here but you can see that lines actually failed because of the slider vibration these are real buttes that's just fabulous somebody's diy repair they could see the lines were getting bad so they tied some line around it and got through the weekend very impressive not my idea of how to repair a line but it survived for a little while these are more pinching damage slowly but surely the slider nibbling through please run protectors why am i a fan of these covers the slider stops that performance designs produce it's because we had an incident here quite some years ago where this poor person got really quite badly injured they were jumping with soft links mini risers tiny toggles the parachute de france these brilliant toggles but they went through an opening that was a bit strong the slider came flying down with no resistance straight over the top of the risers and stopped on top of their head it covered their head they looked up to check canopy they didn't understand what was going on if you don't like it cut away pull the reserve because of a poorly rehearsed emergency procedure and compressible housings they did not release the left hand riser when they cut away and pulled the reserve had a main reserve entanglement and they hit the ground quite hard now what were they doing jumping with inappropriate risers and uh, for that experience level i don't know had they had the slider stopping at the top of the risers where it should be for a novice jumper they wouldn't have had the same issues now if you have a slider stop type device like this the slider is going to stop there not get in your face during the opening we also have uh, quite often situations where a slider comes flying down and if the toggle is not properly secured as the slider slams into it it can knock it off or as has happened in the past as well somebody has gone through an opening the slider comes flying down and it actually stops when it gets to the toggle so in this particular case the toggle was locked in place by the grommet on one side the other side as they pulled the brakes off it brake came off this one was locked up it really almost gave them a, a very serious accident they managed to clear it just at the last minute before flaring so big fan of these for a lot of people there's no reason to pull the slider down on the majority of canopies it's really psychological as far as helping your canopy perform better but the amount of hassle that the slider grommets give you getting it past your brakes and everything as a novice jumper is way too much compared to the just leave it up at the top pull the drawstrings on the slider of course but stop it shaking or run protective covers like these let them sacrifice themselves once they're worn out get them replaced but definitely pull the drawstrings on your slider to stop it flapping and if you want to get the slider down you can still get it down it takes a little bit more effort click click and it's down 
the metal connector links are all very nice and strong depending on the application and the force you put them through you might you need a, a larger one compared to a smaller one size of riser makes a difference as well if they're not properly tightened they will come loose and if they come loose they can stretch open and that's not healthy for you if that happens so when you tighten them tighten them properly please follow the manufacturer's uh, recommendations you should feel the link going nicely by hand and then when you put your tool on it it's just another cinch now notice this one when I tighten it up there's a lot of thread exposed on the other side when I say a lot of thread there's just a tiny little bit but if you notice how little threads there actually are on that side you realize whoops there's nothing holding so from links being tightened up maybe a bit too enthusiastically the stop at the top of this causes a nut to break through and carry on going to the other side as tight as tight too tight as loose again the bogus models made in China you want to stay away from these they're quite difficult to detect but there's just something about them that looks weird and when you have a very close inspection you'll notice there's no um, identification on them apart from maybe sometimes China or something but you really want to use the ones that are built in France certified connector links which these were um, they're not the stainless steel models but these have been over tightened notice the crack forming there so of course it held they didn't split open but it's not ideal to be jumping with a split nut on your connector link throw them out put them in your display that's a nice big connector link certified but it's been tightened up so much that the stop has failed at the top and it's just carried on allowing the nut to go all the way to the top L bars the screws are tightened and a line painted across so that you can inspect them the same is happening with the connector links so what you might find when you take it off to do some maintenance and put it back on again afterwards as you tighten it up for the second or third time you might find that you'll need to remove that red mark scrape it off and paint a fresh one because as you tighten it up again there's a little bit of give and it's moved over a little when you're working with the connector links as well have a close look at the state this particular one the nut was moving beautifully everything felt good but it looked like it had been trapped somehow possibly during manufacture or I'm, I'm not sure how, how that damage happened but I'm not comfortable having that on the parachute if you ever come across these D shackles with the locking screw take care You've got left hand thread and right hand thread so always try and tighten the screw first before loosening it and as you screw you'll find the lock screw backs off with this particular link it's used on the atom tandem to hold the drogue riser in place it's exposed to a, a, a constant movement in drogue flight so eventually there's a chance that this will work its way free I have had situations where the screw has dropped out the locking screw has dropped out and uh, it almost separated not a healthy situation again even when there's a red line painted across here it's not much use to you if you're not going to do periodic inspections uh, that's what it should look like and it, it doesn't take a lot just to peel things back and have a look inside yes I've got one red line on both sides not two red lines on 
one side. The same with these cute little models. If you're not sure which is the locking screw, just try and tighten before loosening and you'll find if you start tightening it and it loosens up, you've got the lock screw. Um, many people have tried to take these off straight away with the untightening and actually you're just tightening that lock screw with the opposite thread and shear it off. But they're cute little connector link. Quite popular in the good old days. I use Loctite 243 on this type of link, not on these and not on any of these. I've tended to exclusively use it on this, on our tandems. It's great stuff, but using it on a regular link, I don't feel as necessary from each time I wanted to do maintenance, I'd have to remove the link completely to clean off the residual and reload it. So now I've just gone very lazy. I prefer to tighten them with dry threads, tighten it to the appropriate torque, and then mark it with my red paint. I feel much more comfortable like that. Don't think that having a, a cover over your link is going to stop it from coming loose. We've had links spread open with the tubes on them, the force going through this link during a deployment, if it's a bit of a thumper deployment, this end here is going to, or this side is going to be stretching ever so slightly, and this side naturally wants to unscrew itself eventually. So occasionally having a periodic inspection, check your red line. Is it one red line? Good, then we're ready for action again. If there are two red lines, something started drifting. If I'm using metal links, I would always mount them with the long end on the riser, the short end holding the lines, and the nuts are all facing inboard. The reason I have them like that is with the long end it sits better on the riser generally, and the nuts inboard because if the slider is running on the exterior, it has a slightly smoother surface to contact if it did contact rather than having the nut on the outside. It could damage your grommets a little bit easier. Again, unlikely on the stainless steel, they, they put up with a lot more impact. And with these type of protectors, there's not a lot of metal contact actually. If you're running link covers like this, they, there's really nothing that you need to do. There's a good size, it sits down and it protects the link quite well from the slider grommet. If you have ones which are slightly larger, what I found with these, they're great, but they do tend to sit down like that and they're exposing the metal. So in between the lines, I will take my tacking cord and run a stitch right through the middle here. And that stops it from dropping down and exposing the metal. If you're running this type of protector, I'm not going to run the stitch straight through the middle. I will attach it using the same technique as I use on the plastic tubes because it's easy. And if I go around twice, One, two. And over. That's the surgeon's knot with a lock knot at the end. This can be moved around. If I've got it down like that, it's not allowing the metal to be exposed out the top. It's not going to slide up during the deployment and I can still get to my connector link to make my visual inspection. I've found some of these with a big stitch through the middle and it means you can't gain access to inspect the link with ease. You need to snip threads. That way you don't need to snip any threads. 
If you're running the silicon tubes on your connector links, this is quite a common thing to happen. They start ripping. This impact from the slider normally is what's doing that. So each time it impacts, it starts to damage. You can slide it up your lines, rotate it maybe 45 degrees and slide it back down. But if it got to this stage, because the silicon tube tends to rip quite easily, I personally would come in and you can do this in situ with the lines fitted if you're careful and you can nip around removing the damaged section and then pull it back down again. Of course it wants to be covering the entire link with just enough space. These silicon tubes I do not stitch and I would certainly never follow the uh, manuals instructions of shoving a big needle through that because the tendency to rip is, is uh, serious and you'll just damage that. So you want the correct diameter silicon tube for the links that you're running. This is Parachute to France soft link. The first one to hit the market. When we put it through, we make sure it passes through all the lines. And I find it easiest to use a pull-up cord because it's a real close fit. It wants to be quite snug. There we have it, and the ring is secured inside the riser using that clever little half press stud. It's my French soft link. Here you can see there's quite a significant difference in length between the Parachute de France style, and this I believe is an Aerodyne one from some time ago fitting it is slightly different as well. So we go through riser and lines and then before going over the ring we want to take it through that little gap. Out the other side. and that's it locked off in place. Now once it goes into the riser, I'd like to secure that with a stitch, some tacking cord. I'll start from the inside, come through, And through again. Tying the simple surgeon knot as usual. neatly tuck away the tail end so they're not flapping about in the breeze if I can find them. Depending on the style of the stitching on your riser you can hide them out down in between. That's my soft link secured. 
For those of you who choose to run the top ring, run the control line instead of through the guide ring at the four inch mark, they prefer to run it through the top, please don't use the soft link that's securing your canopy to your lines as the guide ring. It's better if you attach an individual line so that if you have some wear, it won't be separating you from one of your line sets. What I find the simplest thing to do is get your top guide ring secure it with a little trap like this and then of course on the riser itself avoiding the soft link pull my one side through and I'm not making a hole I'm just separating the weave of the riser so I've come from the inside and the outside once that's there Pass that through. Run some stitches on this and tuck it inside. So that's a stitch put through it and you can secure that tail end inside the riser. Please be sure if you are using this style, it's not designed to take any load during the deployment. Focus on what you're doing when you set your brakes. That way it's going to be working great as you pop your brakes off. We're running that good, but you really must be sure to set it below. The type of soft links that have the tag on the end, in this case we're using a slink from Performance Designs, pass it through the lines, through the riser, and back again, without going through that hole on the first pass. Now it goes through the hole below the tag and is looped over to lock it in place. That is a correctly assembled soft link. And we're almost done in order to keep it from turning into a snag point. I'll run one simple tacking. So through the tag without offering any tension leave a good amount of tacking cord hanging out the end of the knot and pop that through the soft link again and you're ready for action. It's going to serve you well. Try to avoid putting it through the dive loop, it's not part of the structure of the riser really for holding anything. So when I'm securing the link 
stroke line protector in my sacrificial cover I want it stitched on in a way that it's not going to be moving and it'll, I also want it as low as possible to really get down and cover the parts down below so through it comes through again at the moment the threads are just loose but as I'm not sure if you can see I'm come through around through and the other way so I can pull this down tightly now and cover things up and give myself enough to work with left over right and under and under pull tight right over left and under pull tight left over right and under pull tight snip it off notice I leave quite a substantial amount nip around just underneath and draw that through trying to avoid putting it through one of the suspension lines of course and eventually if I've done my job right out it comes that's going to keep it nicely in place it's not going to move up or move down after it's done some work the slider vibrating is going to trash this up a little okay the outside tends to get most of the abuse once the outside is looking rough you can snip it off that thread pull it up rotate it 180 degrees and put it back down again and stitch it again and get full use out of this we want this cover to be sacrificing itself and leave the lines in peace we get most use out of them if I'm using a connector link of course three and a half the size three and a half connector link I can use the tubular and I'm using a similar technique but in this case it needs to be stitched in a way that I can slip it up to inspect it so I've passed the thread through reasonably high in the link and same again secure it with an appropriate knot Please don't cut these so short that they unravel very easily. Tuck the remaining end up out the way. Now the advantage of stitching it like that, I can still gain access to inspect my connector link. I'll always paint a red line, high tech stuff here, some red nail varnish, painting it across the link onto the shaft allows me to confirm that I've been here I've tightened it the appropriate way and it hasn't moved since I was last working on it if we have two red lines and obviously something started to shift but for normal use it's sitting down no metal exposed slide is going to sail down here sacrificing the protector for the lines and my slider stop when I'm ready I can click click and get it down if you allow your slider to be up and open and let it flap around in flight the damage you're doing to your lines can be quite extreme some of these have less than 200 jumps on them but the canopy was flown for uh, 
its entire life with the slider up and open. So pull on those drawstrings, stop it flapping. If you can't be bothered to do that because you can't reach or it's too much trouble for you, please consider having something that's going to sacrifice itself instead of the lines taking a hammering. Slide a vibration, not good for your lines. That's all for now on Connect Links. I hope this video has been some use to you and you've found some value. If you have any questions, leave some comments below. You could consider giving a thumbs up if you thought it was useful. Give it two thumbs down if you thought it was rubbish. Uh, don't hesitate to leave comments, but I will take a few days to get back to you. Sorry for the delay if there is one. Until the next time, all the best.